Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at that big cooldown for the eastern United States that we can see in the medium to long range. Anyways, before I get into the video, be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. For today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think we will see this big cooldown? And if so, how long lived do you think it will end up being? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video, though. And first things first, we need to look at that 72-hour snowfall out west because we've had over a foot of snowfall in those magenta colors there uh, and also 6 to 12 inches of snowfall there in those pinks and purples. This snowstorm is just getting started and we can expect multiple more feet for some of these areas. Uh, it's going to be a big one and as we zoom in out west as you can see a lot of Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming especially have seen a lot of that snowfall. Even some yellow is beginning to show up for Montana which is indicating close to 24 inches has already fallen for some of those mountain tops. So yes, this has been a very major snowstorm so far, and it is just getting started. Now for context, we need to take a look at our PNA chart here on our European Weeklies model. If you look towards the very, very left hand corner of your screen, uh, you can see that we have been in a very far negative PNA. This has been why it has been so warm in the eastern United States and so cool out west. This has also allowed for that snowstorm to even take place in the first place. As you can see, over the next just about, I would say, five days or so, this is going to go from strongly negative to pretty moderately positive uh, very sharply. And this is what is going to be the catalyst for our switch from a warm pattern in the east to a cold pattern in the east. Let me show you an example of a negative PNA pattern. This is exactly what it looks like. Cold along the western seaboard there, and then warm for a majority of the central and eastern United States. This is actually from the past three days. This is what the past three days have looked like. We were obviously in a very strongly negative PNA, and this is pretty much what it ends up looking like. Now, I went and found a positive PNA pattern. This one is August 5th of this year. And as you can see, it's warm along the western seaboard there, and then cold for a majority of the central and eastern United States. So that is the difference between a negative and a positive PNA. Hopefully that helps you understand. Now here is our NAO chart or North Atlantic Oscillation and in its negative phase this sets up really good blocking in the Atlantic Ocean to allow for very cold air to set, set up in the eastern United States. This is unfortunately for us cold lovers going to set up in a positive pattern actually right around when that PNA goes pa positive. It's kind of just I mean ridiculous at this point but the, the PNA has been negative for quite a while. It finally goes positive, and then we see the NAO follow with it and kind of set up a little bit less favorable pattern. The only thing that we can be optimistic about here is that we do see that it trends negative for the medium to long range, shortly going positive, but not for long. Now, our Arctic Oscillation, AO, and this is basically what allows for Arctic blasts to take place. In its negative phase, we see a lot of that cold air making its way from the Arctic regions down through Canada and into the United States. In its positive phase, all that Arctic air just stays up in the Arctic. It doesn't really like to come out of there. As you can see, we're in a negative phase, and we're going to move towards a positive phase around the 21st. And we're going to stay that way for quite a while, but it will trend negative just like the NAO. That blue line is that control line, and that does take it pretty far negative in the medium to long range. All right. Now, finally, let's take a look at a temperature anomaly chart from today. As you can see, it's very cold in the West. Those kind of magenta colors are indicating temperatures that are about 30 to 40 degrees below normal, which is obviously a very significant departure from what is typical. In the eastern United States, we can see generally positive temperatures overall. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on, and we're going to take a look at when this cooldown is going to occur. Now, it's not happening yet, but we're going to see the cooldown in a bit. Now, this frame right here is going to be Wednesday, October 13th during the afternoon or tomorrow from the time I'm making this video. And as you can see, still very cold in the west, very warm in the east. Now, by Saturday, we could see things really begin to change up. We see kind of warmer temperatures making their way onto the west coast. Again, that is the signs that a, a positive PNA is developing. We see that colder air has now moved to the Rockies and into the central United States and it's racing eastward 
and we see that warm-up in the eastern United States generally coming to an end. By the time we reach Sunday morning, October 17th, we see the first little bit of a cool down move into the Gulf states, the southeast, the mid-Atlantic, the Ohio Valley, and even portions of the Great Lakes. Uh, but we do see that it is still only slightly above normal out west. Now, by the time we reach about Monday evening, that's going to be October 18th, I would say about 7 or 8 p.m. here, we see cold for the northwest cold for the south central United States, and cold for majority of the eastern United States. Now this is generally the pattern we find ourselves looking at as we look to the long range. Now the interesting thing is by the time we reach about Tuesday evening, that's going to be October 19th, we can see that there is some colder air that makes its way in from the north central United States. This is kind of more of an Arctic blast because this one comes from Canada and from the Arctic regions of the world and shoves its way down or blasts its way down into the United States. So that is going to be something we really need to watch to make this cooldown even more significant. And there's, in reality, there's actually multiple cooldowns we're expecting, which is pretty, pretty interesting. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on towards Wednesday evening and take a look at what this cooldown or Arctic blast will end up doing. All right, now here we are taking a look at Wednesday evening. As you can see, we see that the upper Midwest, the Ohio Valley, and the Great Lakes are now dealing with pretty sufficient below normal temperatures. We're talking 5 to 15 degrees below normal for a lot of those regions. And this thing becomes even more potent, actually, by Friday morning. This is going to be approximately 6 a.m. on Friday, October 22nd. And we see those very bright greens showing up. That is closer to those 15 degree below normal amounts there. Uh, we see pretty widespread blues here and this is an arctic blast at this point this one because it did come from the arctic regions of the world we can see that out west it's the opposite of how it had been we see warmer than normal conditions all over the place for the western united states and for the eastern third we see below normal temperatures here uh, and by the time we reach saturday morning you can see this reaches the southeast coast the gulf coast the ohio valley uh, and other surrounding regions now the Interesting thing here is that by the time we reach the very end of this model run, which take it with a grain of salt because it is 384 hours out, which is very, very significant, okay? So the confidence of this isn't that high, but it does have us returning to a negative PNA pattern. And as you can see, the warm begins to build in the central United States and likely will follow up with the eastern United States as well if this pattern was to take place. I am doubtful though. This is very long range. It is possible, but it is, again, very, very long range. Now, for today's confidence tab, we are at a 4 out of 6. Um, and the reason for this is a lot of the things that are going to take place are in the medium to longer range, so our confidence is a bit lower. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, when do you think our next big snowstorm will be this fall? And James Marr said, I believe we will have to wait until early November for our next big snowstorm. Very interesting there. Good comment of the day as well. Anyway, for today's patron, Highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Platinum Patrons. Bill Kreitz, James Wade, Dobie Nagel, Larry LePan, Mandy Birchfield, and Patrick Strickland as well. I would also like to thank our Diamond Patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Kotalusa, Cap Bite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Alan Goodmaben, Bill Dallas, Gary's, John Khaleesi, Dwight Phelan, Stephen Kurnethal, and Thomas D. Barr as well. I would also like to thank our uh, channel members, Cap Bite, Stephen Fan, and Jeremy Cox as well. If you'd like to join our Patreon page, you can do so by clicking the button in the pinned comments down below or in the description and join it today. Or if you'd like to join our channel membership, that one is going to be found next to the subscribe button down below. Uh, and you, if you join either of those, you will be featured on these end screens, which is really, really awesome. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.